So we have drinking beer. You're still current single. Mm-hmm. Hot disc UK song of the year. Rolling Stone Country top 25. Mm-hmm. You know, they put it in the top 25 for 2014. Yeah. How do you look at that reaction to to your song? You know, I, I just think it's a good you know, sort of vote of confidence, you know. Um, uh, it, it tells me in, a, in an independent world uh, that, that you can still get it out there and people will respond to it if it's if it's good music or if they deem it so, you know. Um, and it, you know, it just basically tells me, you know, I'm doing something right and people are responding and we're, you know, getting excitement and, and uh, you know, it's a means to, a, uh, to whatever's next, you know, so I'm, I'm really... Uh, excited about that and I'm glad that, that people kind of seem to respond to my spin on things and you know it's uh, not something that I just started doing yesterday so it's it's very it's a very cool thing. Do you let those accolades affect you in any way? <laughs> well if the accolades came with millions of dollars uh, <laughs> I might be lighting cigars with hundred dollar bills but no, I mean I, I think if they affect me in any way it's just uh, telling me to keep doing what I'm doing, um, I, you know, um, it definitely doesn't make you rest on your laurels in any way, or or, or, or want to say, all right, I've I've made it, or I've, I can quit now, or, or anything like that. You know, it just you know it just tells me I'm on the right road, thank God, and I can keep doing it. When you think about the trajectory of a song like that, and then the success that comes out, does it ever? blow your mind that all that comes out of a day having fun with Tony Mullins yeah it, it does it's it's really cool I mean especially when you realize you know how many times you sit down to write a song uh, whether it be by yourself or with someone else in town you know I've been in Nashville a number of years and um, you know very the, the very small percentage of uh, the songs that people sit down and write on any given day are ever recorded or you know or beyond that ever really make a stir whatsoever so so it's it's really awesome to think that uh, you know you caught a little bit of a a cold little lightning in a jar or lightning in a bottle uh, any any time and it's it's a it's a gift for sure when that happens but me and Tony just uh, you know we 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 laugh about it talk about it because it was such a fun song to write and and uh, you know the track that you hear is basically kind of a glorified uh, or you know uh, enhanced version of the uh, the version that we put down in the studio uh, after we wrote it. So it's just kind of an acoustic uh, work tape that was turned into uh, a polished master, you know, through the mastery of Dave Brainerd, who was obviously Grammy nominated. So he put that magic dust on it, you know. What is, when you kind of going on the song being successful in those various ways, what is your broader definition of success? Uh, waking up every day and, and getting, to do it, getting to do what I love to for a living. I mean, honestly, it's not, it's not about awards or, or accolades or anything like that. I mean, the accolades, is, I guess, if you get any kind of an honorable mention here and there, it's just a way to, uh, to, to make people more aware of what you're doing and, uh, you know, kind of helps sort of, um, you know, reward you for years of hard work and sweating it out and moving away from your family and, and uh, making a lot of sacrifices in your life. Um, but, you know. We'll come back to those sacrifices later. <laughs> it's a nice segue to another question. What would be, what do you consider a, a, a big lesson, something you know now that you wish you had learned a little earlier in your career? You, you gotta, um, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Is not exactly it, but I think ultimately, you know, earlier on when I was in the business, uh, I probably allowed a, a lot of things to rest on other people that uh, that you assume were doing things and, and they weren't. You know, I mean, it teaches you, you know, how to uh, to find the right people in your life and surround yourself with them. And, and uh, you know, so I, it, I, I would love to know. Now you know what I didn't know back then, as far as all that goes, and, and other otherwise too. Uh, just just work ethic, you know. I mean, um, you can get out there. I remember my my first record deal. I mean, I was guilty of getting out there and soaking it up, and uh, you know, 
not taking care of business maybe or not having that mentality probably as much as I should have should have had um, so so that's definitely something I wish I'd known 10 15 years ago do you feel that the way you approach that first record deal that's almost a phase you have to go through I don't want to call it a mistake you have to make but yeah, sort of a phase yeah. you have to go through to yeah. learn who you really are and then appreciate yeah. when you can control your own yeah, career it's kind of like a starter marriage <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you you know, I, I'm I don't I don't know if everybody's this way. I assume a lot of people are. I have to learn things the hard way, and um, you know, so I mean, having a record deal and losing it, that that, that right there will, uh, I mean, that'll that'll tell you what you made of, and also tell you whether you meant to ultimately to to, to do this or not. You know, because um, that's when the work starts. Honestly, I mean, everybody's lucky and they want to come and get a record deal, get a record deal. It's everybody dreams about, but, you know, it's what happens after you get that deal that matters. Um, you know, because you, know, you get that record deal and all of a sudden you're in competition literally with uh, you know, all the other uh, people signed to that roster for promotional dollars and attention and, and all the things that it takes to, the favor that it takes to... Uh, to get out there and and, uh, and 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 be broken, you know, and uh, it's it's a hard thing to do, um, you know. Even if somebody's got all the right tools and the greatest artists in the world, if they don't have the right team of people surrounding them. If there's a you know chink in the armor somewhere, it's still gonna. It it, it might not not happen, but it might take it a lot longer to happen. So, um, yeah. All right. Slightly deeper question. Where do you look for authenticity in the world we live in where so many things are not? Um, well, I mean, as, as far as music goes, um, just the underground, which now is, has kind of become, the, the internet, I mean, has kind of become the underground now. I mean. You gotta know, I guess, where to look, and I don't know if I could even tell people where to look. Um, but you know, you realize um, what goes into the thinking. You know, a lot of this music these days is more or less predetermined or pre-created in, in a conference room um, from how the, they want their people to look to what they want to sound like, and uh, you know, they're doing all these. Uh, analytical uh, studies of, on you know what's going to sell to who and whatever else and all that's really important in business but uh, to me uh, you know real music starts with the art side of it and it comes from the heart and it comes uh, spontaneously and it's not you know it's not premeditated you know um, so yeah I mean I'd, I'd say that that's you know, the best place to start looking would be online, you know. And then referring back to the sacrifices you mentioned earlier, how do you frame in your life the sacrifices that were necessary and still are necessary to build and sustain a career, like being away from the people you love, not yeah. necessarily being in charge of your own time? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think first and foremost, you just, you just have to love it. you got to have a drive to do it in your heart that you know you gotta you gotta know it's what you're meant to do you gotta you gotta be convinced of that before you ever move to town and if you're not you'll figure it out uh, pretty quick after you get here you know because if you know, the competition alone will scare the hell out of you and make you want to move back home if it's not what you're meant to do but um, you know I, I've been here for a lot of years now and to uh, and on average, I go home to North Carolina to see my parents and brothers and you know nieces and nephews and all that um, a couple of times a year. And you know, when you see your family, no more often than that, it's like you can see how much they've aged from the last time you saw them to this time. And the whole mortality factor comes into your mind, and it just makes you realize, God, life is so short. And, you know, sometimes you think, what the hell am I doing? You know, I mean, these people, this is my family, and I never see them because I'm chasing this 
this dream and you know pursuing this career I mean it's a blessing to have you know um, on any level if you're making a living at it it's you know it beats a hell out of doing a lot of things so um, you know so that's that's tough you know and I've I've seen a couple of marriages come and go as well you know um, and that's partially due to uh, honestly the uh, the selfish uh, nature, self-centered nature of, of this business and having to get out there and sell yourself and have, you know, always thinking about yourself, self, 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 you know. Um, that's a little maddening sometimes. It makes you a little crazy, and it's kind of good to get away from that or at least try to. Um, I mean, because that, that can, you know, that can make you a pretty lonely old man at some point, you know, if, if that's all you ever, you ever are. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, every every career has its uh, pros and cons and its sacrifices and compromises and, uh, you know, I mean, you could be a doctor, you know, you could be a lawyer. I mean, uh, you might still live near your parents, but you, you know, literally, uh, you know, some of those guys probably don't see theirs any more than I do. Um, it, it's all it, for me. It's it's it becomes more of a question of prioritizing things in your life that you used to not. Uh, put so high on the list and uh, and that's kind of how it's getting for me I you know I'd like to take the time to see family and and when I'm home actually hang out with them instead of just floating around everywhere yeah. Um, yeah. the that brought up a question when you're talking about that need to focus on yourself and that specific way you need to view your career yeah. how do you feel being a performing artist shaped your character over the years? Well, it made me crazy as hell. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, one, one thing that it, it has brought to me um, you know I've had the opportunity, I mean, you get into this, and at first when you're a young man, you know, I think a lot of the uh, the dreams you have and the visions you have and everything else are, uh, you know, very self-centered and very materialistic, and, uh, you know, you want the big house and the, you know, uh, you want to make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, but... Um, but, but after being in it for a while, uh, one of the things that's been the most rewarding thing, and it's been a, a very eye-opening experience for me, is, is being able to get out and, and uh, uh, take part in ch like different charities, for one thing, uh, seeing uh, and getting the opportunity to, to be part of events that uh, go towards changing someone's life for the better, no matter what that is, you know, being involved in going and performing for the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, some of those things. It's just a, you realize just what a, uh, you know, what a great position you're in to, and how lucky you are to, to be able to do that and, and somehow uh, try to repay them for what they do and, you know, take them, you know, play some role in, in taking them away from it for a little bit. I mean, you feel like after a while you, you kind of, you recognize the need for performing artists more and more and more uh, uh, for that escapism and, and everything else. And so at first it was almost like I was uh, doing it for my own escapism, but uh, now I, I see it a lot more in other people. And you get, uh, you know, you almost kind of get to a point where you feel it's your responsibility to a certain point to uh, to. to to do that, to to help take people away from you know whatever it is that they're trying to get away from. Yeah. And let's finish on a slightly lighter note. Um, which songs would you put on if you had to make a soundtrack of your life? Which songs would you put on your own, or other people's, oh, God. anything at all? Mm, man, that's a that's a good one. Well, I mean, I, and my songs are a soundtrack of my life for the most part, whether it be my own experiences uh, or not. They're at least my observations. So I would say, you know, uh, not to sound too egocentric there. I, I mean, that's that's kind of the obvious answer. But there's there's a lot of songs out there that that uh, I would put down on that, and I, you know, uh, some of which are some of the songs that I recently recorded, some old covers that. Uh, 
that I did a little root session for that uh, that we've been putting out little videos for lately. But like uh, you know, "Live Forever" by Billy Joe Shaver, um, you know, "Good Old Boys Like Me" by Don Williams. Um, you know, there's there's a number of, of those old songs that that, uh, that I love. You know. Um, Carolina on my mind has always been, you know, I know you like James Taylor, you know, I'm from Carolina myself, so that was always a song that, you know, struck me pretty hard, you know, there's a lot of his too, but, um, I don't know, that's, that's a short list, I know, but that's some of them. All right, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.